Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Today is Saturday, November 2nd, 2024. We are all cannon folder to the globalist and deep swamp of the corrupt government. Layers of an onion peeled back one layer at a time with many layers within that layer, but still all taking part in different aspects of their plans for greed, power, and control. One layer, illegal immigration, even has its own layers. Greed for cheap labor, slave labor, sex trafficking, increased pressure on limited funds for schools, hospital, housing, and police all cause a decrease in quality in what they should provide. Another layer of the same layer prevents early detection of crime, early detection of future problems, and prevention of the spread of viruses. All by, by design, they are created. Recently in Utah, the bird flu has now been detected in eight commercial dairies in Cache County. The first round of mandatory milk testing in northern Utah identified bird flu infections in eight dairy herds, said the Utah Department of Agriculture and Food on Thursday. Utah is the 15th state to report the avian flu virus in dairy cattle since the disease was first identified in herds in Texas in March. Many people, many of them immigrants, work not just at one dairy farm, but they also may work at different chicken farms, having several jobs, or they live in a family or a community or in housing with others who also work at different dairy and cattle farms. And this is probably how it traveled to eight dairy farms within such a short period of time. The illness was first discovered in Utah at a commercial poultry flock, leading to the killing of nearly 2 million chickens. Utah mandated weekly testing of samples from milk storage tanks in Cache County on October 23rd, following the outbreak of the highly pathogenic avian influenza on an egg farm with 1.85 million laying hens. Cache County is 85 miles north of Salt Lake City on the Idaho border. It could have been spread by birds in just that one small location or traveled on the clothing or trucks or vehicles between the different locations. But because of limited funds, they just don't know. On Wednesday, the USDA and Oregon agricultural officials reported the first U.S. case of bird flu in swine on a small backyard farm in Crook County in the central part of the state. They had, I believe, four to five pigs. One pig had the mutated form of the bird flu in the pig. The Utah outbreak raises the U.S. total to 411 cattle herds in 15 states. California has the most with 202 herds. Colorado is second with 64 herds, and Idaho is third with 35 herds. After the first case of the avian flu to hit Utah, and it was confirmed at a commercial poultry farm in Cache County, um resulting in the culling of nearly 2 million chickens. The illness somehow made its way to eight commercial dairies in the valley. I don't believe in coincidence. The infected dairies have been placed under quarantine and have been asked to implement biosecurity measures to prevent the spread of the virus. The Utah Department of Agriculture and Food announced Wednesday, unlike the poultry. The disease is not fatal to dairy cattle, and the animals recover in a few weeks, the department said. Required testing is only going to make our food cost much more. Yeah, another layer of that onion. Or requiring vaccinations and certification for the cattle. Yeah, adding more costs, another layer of the onion to make things more expensive for U.S. citizens. Cattle transportation is a significant risk factor. 
if you are transporting animals, um, are they sterilizing the trailers between loads? And then there are the potential interactions with people who may have moved from farm to farm. Think about a larger industry event where people are interacting or shows where livestock are coming from various farms and congregating in one place. As an industry, they need to be aware of the risks that these events pose and work to ensure that biosecurity is at the top of the mind. Ensuring extra security and sanitation can be very expensive. Yeah, the certification, the vaccines that's required for yeah, different places, the uh, clothing that the workers wear, um, the gloves that they're supposed to wear. They reused or not used at all. The disinfectants that are supposed to be used. Are they watered down to save on costs? People at these different farms may visit other farms. They may have visitors who may be coming from other farms, even running an errand to another farm. From the 1st of January of 2003 to the 27th of September 2024, a total of 261 cases of human infection with avian influenza H5N1 virus had been reported from five countries within the Western Pacific region. Of these cases, 142 were fatal, resulting in a case fatality rate of 54%. The last case in the Western Pacific region were reported from Cambodia with an onset date of August 20th, 2024. Globally, from the 1st of January to 2003, not just the Western Pacific, but globally, 896 cases of human infection with avian influenza, H5N1 virus, were reported in 24 countries. Of these, 464 were fatal with a death rate of 51%. There in Utah, enacting mandatory surveillance and animal movement restrictions are important steps to preventing the further spread of the disease, state veterinarian Daniel Christensen said in a news release. He also said that at this time, we don't anticipate a major impact on food supply and the overall impacts to individual dairies are relatively minimal at this time. They don't anticipate a major impact on the food supply. But that's just another layer to the, to the onion, isn't it? Where they want to limit food, you'll work and own nothing. That is another layer of the onion. According to the CDC, the recent detection of the illness still do not present an immediate public health concern. Cannon folder. Yeah, those working at the poultry and dairy farms are cannon folder. Mostly immigrants. Most of those that are illegal and they come down sick, well, they just toughen it out. They don't go to the hospital or even the, see a regular doctor. People who do come in regular contact with dairy cattle should contact their local department, health department, if they show symptoms such as a fever, cough, sore throat, difficulty breathing, um, eye irritation, headaches, runny nose, body aches, diarrhea, or vomiting. But they don't. Majority of people, they just toughen it out. They can't afford the medical bill. Signs of the avian flu in dairy cattle include decreased milk production, a thicker milk, a lack of appetite, dehydration, and a fever. Now, they do know that for the avian flu, that if the food is cooked properly to a proper temperature, that it kills the virus. But the virus is mutating. What is it going to mutate into next? What are they going to allow it? to mutate into or what are they going to create now the bird flu that was found in cook county oregon was a different type of bird flu much different than the ones that was found in california and other states 
those states, um, it is known as B313H151. That type of bird flu that was found in the dairy cows in California was known as B313. But this new virus in Oregon is called D1. And we're supposed to take their word for it that it is of wild bird origin. Following the history of the bird flu on March 25th, the USDA announced unpasteurized clinical samples of milk from sick cattle collected from two dairy farms. One was in Kansas and the other was in Texas. Two different states, but tests showed that the pathogenic analysis and epidemiological support a single introduction of this new no novel host which followed by onward transmissions. So what are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you all.